Thank you for joining us tonight for the State Road 50 Design Public Meeting. It is currently 5.32 p.m. My name is Dennis Atkins. I will be your main presenter this evening. We will be taking a few minutes to allow everyone to get connected. Let's go over a few tips. Let's go over a few technical topics that will help you have a better meeting experience. If you join the meeting using a typical desktop computer and web browser, you should see a webinar control panel that looks something like this. Your computer speakers are selected by default. Please note that all attendees' microphones are muted upon entering the meeting. If you prefer to listen by phone, click the Please select the phone call option. The dial-in phone number information will be displayed. This control panel is also where you can enter your comments or questions in the questions box. If you experience technical issues during the meeting, please report it to the project team by using the question pane on the control panel. You can also call 407-637 7461. Staff will do their best to assist you. If you feel you have missed anything, this entire meeting is being recorded and will be made available for your review after the meeting. We will continue to wait for all attendees to join and address any technical issues before proceeding. Please use the questions box to let us know if you are having any issues. And remember, if you are having audio issues, you can still join the audio portion of the meeting by dialing in on your phone. The department encourages your comments and questions. There are multiple ways to provide your input. You can type your comments or questions directly into the question pane on the meeting control panel anytime during the meeting. You can also submit your comments after the meeting by using standard mail, email, or telephone. Contact information is available on both project websites. While we wait, let's take a quick poll. Which of the two project segments are you interested in? Segment four is from County Road 478A in Sumter County to just east of the Sumter Lake County line. Segment five continues from east of the county line to County Road 33 in Lake County.
So far, it looks like most people are here about both segments. But segment five is edging out over segment four. All righty, let's go ahead and see what brought you to this meeting. How did you hear about it? Did you receive a letter in the mail? See the advertisement in the newspaper? Or did you hear about it by word of mouth? Or did you see it advertised on the project website? So far, it looks like most people have received a letter in the mail or by email, but a lot of people have heard about it from someone else. We'll give a couple more minutes on this, and then we'll move on to the presentation. All righty, let's go over the reviews of the polls. Okay. So it looks like most people are here to learn about both segments. Segment five has got a really solid lead over segment four, but segment four is hanging in there. All right. And it does look like most people received a letter or email about the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, public meeting. Actually, some people saw it in a newspaper. That's nice to know. And almost 30% of people heard about it from someone else. Can you see my screen now? We will begin the pro presentation momentarily. In the meantime, let's introduce some of the project team. We have June Jean Francois, the FDOT project manager for both project segments, Jeff Messenger, the consultant project manager for segment four, and Philip Jacoby, the consultant project manager for segment five. Other team members are online and are available to answer your questions and take your comments. Please feel free to enter your comments or questions anytime during the presentation. 
All comments and questions will be gathered, read aloud, and addressed during the comment and question portion of the meeting. We will wait a few more minutes to resolve any technical issues and give all attendees a chance to join. If you do have any technical issues, please contact us. By either typing into the question pane or calling the help number. Staff will do their best to assist you. And as a reminder, if you feel you have missed anything, this entire meeting is being recorded and will be made available for, rev for your review after the meeting. And again, another reminder, if you're still having audio issues, you can always join the audio portion of the presentation by dialing in on your telephone. We will wait a few more moments for any last minute issues. Okay, we're getting ready to start the presentation. We'll give it a few more moments. Alrighty, don't seem like we have, excuse me, I don't see any other issues being presented, so we're going to go ahead and begin the presentation. Start out by saying good evening and thank you for joining us for this virtual public meeting. It is currently 5.45 p.m. Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. For those of, for those of you just joining us, my name is Dennis Atkins and I will be your main presenter this evening. This public meeting is for two adjacent projects on State Road 50. The first project, Financial Project ID Number 435859-4, consists of proposed improvements to State Road 50 from east of County Road 478A in Sumter County to east of the Sumter Lake County line. The second project, Financial Project ID Number 435859-5, consists of proposed improvements to State Road 50 from east of the Sumter Lake County line to County Road 33 in Lake County. Due to, the, due to the state of emergency declared by Governor DeSantis in Executive Order 20-52, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is authorized to be held virtually and not in person. We are using the GoToWebinar meeting platform there is no cost to the public to log in or dial in to participate in the meeting. All attendees will be placed in listen only mode throughout the presentation. This meeting is being held in accordance with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, 
or the Florida Department of Transportation statewide Title VI coordinator. Title VI information has been included in the meeting notifications and on the project websites at cflroads.com. As stated earlier, we are, presenting, we are presenting information regarding two segments of State Road 50. The first segment will be referred to as Segment 4, which is from east of County Road 478A in Sumter County to east of the Sumter Lake County line. The second segment, referred to as Segment 5, is from east of the Sumter Lake County line to County Road 33 in Lake County. A project development and environment, or PD&E study, was completed in March of 2019. The PD&E study was broken down into five design segments. Today, we are discussing segments four and five. The study results showed, that, showed the need to increase capacity and improve safety along State Road 50. These segments of State Road 50 are being widened to improve capacity and traffic flow from Orlando to the west coast of Florida. Both segments include the addition of a multi-use trail to facilitate bicycle traffic and complete connectivity to the coast-to-coast -coast trail system. The Florida Department of Transportation recognizes the success of any transportation project is dependent upon a successful public outreach effort. Public notices for this virtual public meeting, including information on how to access the virtual, the virtual meeting platform were provided in letters to officials, property owners, and tenants in the project area. A posting was made in the Florida Administrative Register. Advertisements were posted in the Orlando Sentinel and the Daily Commercial. Emails were sent to persons on the project contact list. Notices were posted on the project websites. Additional public, additional public involvement efforts will include providing documentation of questions, comments, and responses given during the comment period. A public meeting summary will also be provided. The project stakeholders in the area include Sumter and Lake Counties, the Lake Sumter MPO, City of Mascot, St. John's River Water Management District, Southwest Florida Water Management District, the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and the Florida Forest Service, local elected, appointed, and agency officials, special interest groups and organizations, and local, and local property owners, tenants, and businesses are all, are all, <clears throat> excuse me, are also key stakeholders. Environmental considerations are a major part of any roadway improvement project. The environmental conditions along both segments include different public lands, environmentally, environmentally sensitive lands, and various species of plants and wildlife. Let's start looking at the specifics of each segment. Segment four begins east of County Road 478A and extends to east of the Sumter Lake County line. Through the project limits, State Road 50 is a two-lane rural roadway and serves as a hurricane evacuation route. This project segment is 8.1 miles in length. In segment four, State Road 50 will be widened from an existing two-lane roadway to a four-lane divided roadway. This typical section will have two travel lanes in each direction, separated by a 40-foot median. There will be paved inside and outside shoulders. A 12-foot 12 12-foot wide shared use path is planned along the south side of the roadway. This will connect to a future trail planned along the east side of the east side of State Road 471. The shared use path will also connect to the Van Fleet Trailhead. Widening through the state forest portion of segment four will have a slightly compressed layout. There will be two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction, separated by a 40-foot median. There will be paved inside and outside shoulders, and a 12-foot shared use path is planned along the south side of the roadway. The shared use path will be located closer to the main, closer to the main travel lanes throughout the state forest portion of segment four. 
There are two proposed roundabouts in segment four, one at State Road 471, which is currently a signalized intersection, and another at County Road 469 that is currently stop controlled. Roundabouts were selected due to their advantages over a signalized intersection. Roundabouts increase safety by dramatically reducing serious injury and fatality crashes. Roundabouts reduce travel delay by, by improving intersection efficiency. And roundabouts tend to be more environmentally friendly by reducing pollution and fuel consumption and typically require less space than a traditional signalized intersection. Links to more information on roundabouts are on the project website. We are currently in the design phase of the project schedule. Final design and permitting are to be completed by spring 2021. Survey and mapping are also underway and are anticipated to be completed by early 2022. Right-of-way acquisition and construction are currently not funded. Moving on to segment five. Segment five is from east of the Sumter Lake County line in Lake County to County Road 33. As in the first segment, State Road 50 is currently a two lane rural roadway and serves as a hurricane evacuation route. The length of this project segment is 4.2 miles. In segment five, State Road 50 will also be widened from an existing two lane rural roadway to a four lane divided roadway. Most of segment five will have a typical section with two 12 foot travel lanes in each direction, separated by a 40 foot median. There will be paved inside and outside shoulders. A 12 foot wide multi-use path is, is, planned upon this, is planned along the south side of the roadway. The section from Lee Road to County Road 33 will be an urban typical section this design includes two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction, separated by a 22-foot median. There will be seven-foot buffered bike lanes in each direction. Curb and gutter is provided. A 12-foot wide multi-use path is included on the south side of the roadway and a six-foot wide sidewalk on the north side. Segment five will also have a roundabout at Tuscanooga Road. Roundabouts are selected due to their advantages over signalized intersection, excuse me, signalized intersections. Roundabouts increase safety, improved intersection efficiency, and reduce cost. We are currently in phase three design of the segment five schedule. Final design and permitting are expected to be completed by spring of 2021. Survey and mapping are currently underway and are anticipated to end early 2023. Right-of-way acquisition and construction for this segment are currently not funded. The FDOT project manager for each segment is June Jean, Jude Jean Francois. Please feel free to contact the project manager if you'd like more information about either project segment. You can also visit the project website at www.cflroads.com and search by the financial project ID numbers 435-859-4 or 435-859-5. There are multiple options available to, available to offer your comments on the improvements. You can type your comments or questions directly into the question pane, excuse me, on the question pane on the meeting control panel anytime during this meeting. You can also submit your comments after the meeting by using standard mail, email, or telephone. Contact information is available on the project websites. We ask that you specify which segment, four or five, you are referring to so the project team can best answer your questions. Whichever way you choose to offer your comments, please have all comments submitted or postmarked by, excuse me, submitted or postmarked by Friday, September 4th, 2020 to be included as part of the public record for this virtual meeting. All comments, questions, and responses will be documented and added to the project websites. Florida's Department of Transportation encourages the public to provide comments 
and ask questions regarding transportation projects throughout the lifetime of the projects. Please visit the project websites for more information. A link to a recording of this meeting will, will be provided on each segment website. Please browse to www.cflroads.com. Again, to find segment four, from east of County Road 478A to east of the Sumter Lake County line, search for financial project ID number 435-859-4. To reach the website <coughs> for segment five, from east of the Sumter Lake County line to County Road 33, search for financial project ID up, excuse me, <clears throat> financial project ID number 435-859-5. That concludes the presentation portion of the meeting. Please remember that this entire meeting is being recorded and will be available for viewing on the project websites. I'm doing on mental I mean and more. containing a link to the recording of these proceedings. I'll, uh, excuse me, I don't know if I was muted, so I'll repeat myself. That concludes the presentation portion of the meeting. Please remember that this entire meeting is being recorded and will be available for viewing on the project websites. All persons registered for this meeting with a valid email address will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours containing a link to the recording of these proceedings. When you log off today's meeting, you will receive a short survey sent to the email you provided. We hope you will complete the survey providing feedback about the meeting. We will now open the meeting to your questions and comments. As a reminder, please enter all of your comments or questions into the question box located in the control panel. Project team members will read questions and comments out loud and provide feedback verbally. Hello everyone. Thank you for attending the virtual public meeting for segments four and five of the State Road 50 design. A PDF of this presentation and a comment form are available for download on the project websites and under the handouts tab of this GoToWebinar. Our first question this evening is, this is regarding uh, the project segment five, when will the when will property acquisition begin for project segment five? Um, yes, this is Phil Jacoby. I'm the project manager for the Dash Five. Um, currently, the uh, right-of-way acquisition is not currently funded, so we do not ha currently have that scheduled. Um, once the funding becomes available, then it will be scheduled. All right, and the next question is, when does the staff expect that segment four will be funded? Uh, I'm Jeff Messenger. I'm the project manager on the Dash 4 project. And similar to Phillip's uh, um, responses, is once it's funded, we'll, we'll start the acquisition, but at this time it's not scheduled. We're trying to get funding, but we don't have a schedule as when that will be. The next question is, where do these projects rank on the LSMPO priority list? So the Lake Sumter uh, Metropolitan I don't have an answer to that one. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't have an answer either. We would have to uh, get get back to you uh, to you on that. Um. Someone did just post that it's number 15 on the list. I'd have to verify that. Um, but the, I know that the MPO's ranking is where they try to prioritize their funding and resources for the project, where the DOT is going to be uh, uh, trying to acquire the funds. Um, regardless of that ranking to try to move it into construction and right away acquisition, but that again is not scheduled. Thank you, Phil and Jeff. Uh, the next question is, 
is the proposed 12 foot multi use path along the south side of State Road 50 in segment five anticipated to traverse the entire length of the project? Yes, it will. Um, it is on the south side of, of, uh, of State Road 50 for the entire length of our State Road 50 improvement uh, all the way to County Road 33. All right, and I just want to say thank you, Jamie, for being on and uh, participating from the MPO side of things. Okay, is lighting included in either segment? I can answer that for the Dash 4 segment is we do have lighting, but it is limited to the locations of the roundabout, which is a requirement for our intersection design. In segment 5, uh, similar, we have uh, we have lighting for our roundabout location, and we will also be adding lighting, uh, replacing the existing lighting in, in the city of Mascot limits, uh, which is would be east of Tuscanooga to, to County Road 33. And there also is additional pedestrian lighting at the signalized intersection with 33. All right, thank you, Jeff and Phil. We do not have any questions coming in at this time. As a reminder, you can type your comments or questions directly into the question pane on the meeting control panel anytime during this meeting. Oh, okay, we've got one here. Is a public water line planned along the route? We are currently coordinating with utilities. Um, you know, that the utility relocations are are currently not part of the roadway project. They, they will likely be occurring, um, uh, going along with it. Um, those those reloc utility companies are right now uh, assessing those, um, what relocations are necessary, and um, we'll, we'll be adding, adding that information as, as, as we progress the plans. That will be up to the, the utility companies to, to determine that though. Yeah, on the uh, Dash 4 project, uh, we're in the same situation, but at this time, uh, we don't have any plans to show any new utilities. All right. How soon? Oh, okay. How soon before we know if our property will be taken or not? We have plans to build in the proposed retention pond area and don't want to waste our time and money building something that may be torn down. This is something that we can address with you offline as well, but if the project team wants to provide some some commentary as far as the schedule goes, we can do that. Yeah, I can uh, take care of this. The, right now, um, the schedule shows that the right-of-way acquisition process would start, I believe it's in about a year, but that is what's scheduled. Um, it's very dependent on the funding. Until the funding is acquired, there won't be any right-of-way acquisition. And during that process is when we send out the notifications and uh, the the uh, um, the appraisers and the, the people who purchased the right-of-way would be in touch with the property owners at that time. All right, next question. Has the future posted speed limit been determined? Yes, uh, through um, the entire limits of the Dash 4 project on State Road 50, the posted speed limit will be 55 mile an hour. Uh, the, the side streets are going to re remain the speed limits that they are now. On the Dash 5 project, uh, similar to Jeff, uh, on the in the west end, uh, from the county line to uh, Lee Ro Road is a rural section that will be 55 miles an hour, but from Lee Road to County Road 33 will be an urban section with a 45 mile per hour design speed. All right, thank you, Phil and Jeff. What sides of the road will the new lanes be added to, south or north? Uh, it, that depends on the section. Uh, it really, the alignment was chosen based on you know terrain and and you know natural features out there and being able to avoid certain 
features. Uh, for example, the first mile or so from the beginning of the project to four, State Road 471, we are doing all of our widening on the north side of the road, but it's going to be a complete reconstruction throughout the entire limit. So the road that's there now is getting torn out and replaced. Uh, east of the roundabout, it transitions to be centered on the existing road. And then um, as it goes through the forestry area, it shifts so that it is all the widening to the south side of the existing road. Uh, in the Dash Five pro project, similar uh, similar to Jeff, um, we are on we we transition from one side to the other on the west end of the project. Uh, we 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 begin widen with uh, the widening on the south side of of the existing roadway, and then there is a transition where it kind of goes through the middle and then on the uh, to the north side, and then we go back to the south side again and finish on the south side up at, at County Road 33. And uh, also, it would be complete re reconstruction through 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 ninety five percent of that length as well. All right. Next question: Where can we find out how much property is currently planned to take, and exactly where does four and five segment segments four and five separate? I am on the line. I believe. Thanks. Did you guys hear that question? Okay. Yeah, I heard it. And I can I can take part of this. Um, the uh, as far as determining what uh, amount of property, you'll know definitely how much property is being taken during the right of way acquisition process. Again, dependent on funding. However, there are going to be displays posted on the website at um, after this meeting, a, a couple of days after this meeting, and feel free to go on there. There. Uh, aerial PDFs, you can find out where you are located and kind of see if the right of way is impacting your property or not. That'll give you a rough idea. As far as the divide between segment four and segment five, it's four tenths of a mile into Lake County. But uh, when the right now, the way we have the project set up is the right of way uh, will be taken through to property lines uh, so that they're only impacted once. So if if you're right on the border, you're most likely going to have your right of way acquired with the Dash 5 project the way it stands right now. Okay. What plans for fencing for agricultural purposes will, uh, will concrete walls be built for noise reduction? Or so, uh, what? Are there plans for fencing for agricultural purposes? Will concrete walls be built for noise reduction? Um, fencing, if, uh, the fencing will be part of the uh, land acquisition, will be part of the settlement of the land acquisition. Um, they, they, uh, the department will um, include uh, a, a remedy for the any, any impacted fencing. Um, with the acquisition, and um, and then that then that then that would not be part of the actual roadway project, um, and they, they, we currently do not have any um, sound walls um, being proposed as part of this as part of the project. Okay, what is left? to be done on section four other than acquisitions? Uh, well, the we just turned in what we call our phase two design plans. And that is roughly 60% complete. We are in the process of uh, updating those plans to start our, our final design and quantities. So a vast majority of the design has been um, completed it's it's a matter of doing cleanup and getting quantities in and getting you know bid documents ready to go to the next stage and amanda i, I believe we skipped a question there it says i live on the north side of Sierra 50 however I, how will i get across the medians to get to my property and there are median openings designed throughout the project. Um, their spacing is determined by our access management guidelines for this type of road uh, with 
partial openings every um, was it every 1300 feet and full openings um, would appear uh, no closer than every 2600 feet. Uh, so if you're not lined up with where one of those openings are, you'll have to go down and do a U-turn. Uh, however, it isn't a very long distance to get to those U-turns. Okay, yes, thank you for catching that. Um, here is here's the next question. If you were a property owner, would you hire an attorney? <laughs> Uh, I cannot advise you as to whether or not to hire an attorney. That is entirely up to the property owner. Next question, is the design set in stone? There are ways to increase traffic on Highway 50 without disrupting homeowners slash landowners. So at this time, I, is the design set in stone? Uh, it, it sounds like this is, the, the design is is not, set in stone until it really um until for till it really you start construction um the design is substantially complete it would take a decent effort to change things depending on what we're talking about changing but as far as as uh providing the extra capacity uh the the really the only way to provide the capacity that's needed for the travel demand on the road is to widen it to four lanes it's just a matter of how we would widen the four lanes um i i it's i guess i'm not sure completely what the, the person who's asking the question is looking for. But uh, um, as far as the going to a four lane section, yes, that is, is has been determined and that's the way we're going. You know, we, we were still open for input on, 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 on the details of it. Um, but yes, the, the, the capacity need is set. Okay, next question. Uh, will the start of the road be in about three years or so? Again, this is a, a question uh, regard, you know, that is dependent upon funding. And um, you know, without a crystal ball, it's okay. impossible to know exactly when that funding is going to happen. Um, so uh, again, the answer of that is dependent on the um, timing of the funding. And just to give everybody an idea of how the timeline works, if we had funding today, we still have about six to 12 months worth of design and then about two years to acquire and get the, the, the property set up and then about another six to 12 months before it would start construction. So, I mean, if we had funding, uh, unless something happened to really speed things along, we're looking at at least three years before construction would start. Thank you, Jeff and Phil. How will the runoff water be treated to prevent and or eliminate contaminants from impacting my property in well water? Well, uh, this, this, the simple answer here is we do have uh, uh, retention ponds um, designed throughout both segments of roadway. They capture the runoff and that's where it's treated and attenuated. What it does is the water sits there for enough time to let the the contaminant settle out um, and uh, before it's released back into where it would naturally go. As far as contaminating your wells, um, that really, uh, you know, well contamination shouldn't happen if as long as your well is a certain distance from those, those runoff areas. I don't know where your particular well would be, but normally this isn't an issue. Um, however, if, if you want to get into more details, feel free to reach out to us via the methods they talked to during the presentation, and we can get you in touch with the right person to talk about that in a little more detail. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that, Jeff. I'll repeat that again. If you have any comments or if you want to talk more specifically about your property offline, you can reach the Florida Department of Transportation Project Manager, June G Jude Jean Francois, by using standard mail at 719 Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by email at jude, J -U -D -E dot J -E -A -N dash 
F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S at dot.state.fl.us or by telephone at 386-943-5487. So if you have any additional questions or you wanna talk more specifically about your property, we can address that there as well. The next question is, we have been told that funding usually happens in July. Do you expect that do you expect that to be the case here that July 2021 is first available for funding? I don't really have an answer on the funding. I know that the the, the districts put in the request to central office and they have a certain amount of money they have to distribute to all the districts and it's just a matter of uh when that's going to happen. Uh don't don't the you're right um the, the, the fiscal years start in July, but funding can become available available throughout the fiscal year. But uh, at this point in time, we don't see the funding for these projects. Will phase four and five acquisition begin at the same time? Currently uh, phase, uh... The Dash 4 project is scheduled to go to construction uh, first, um, but the acquisition phases will likely be will likely overlap. Um, you know, the Dash 4 is only slightly ahead of the Dash 5 uh, in terms of uh, you know a couple months maybe. Is there a report? I'm sorry, is there a retention plan siding report showing the planned retention ponds? There is a pond siding report that was done with the PD&E and it was reviewed and updated by each design project. And if there was a planned uh, or even a, a backup plan for a retention pond on your property, you would have received a letter in the mail by now. So if you didn't receive a letter, uh, relevant to a, a pond, then uh, your property has not been identified as a potential pond site. Again, uh, in the next day or two, we're gonna be posting some PDFs online, and those PDFs do show all the pond and floodplain compensation areas, and you can see if any of those impact your property. And at that time, if you feel that you have questions, the contact information is on the website, and you can reach out to us, and we'll try to help you as best we can. I just want to mention here that the MPO made a comment. Projects are fun projects are funded based on the MPO's priority list. So for those questions about where these projects sit on the MPO list, that's how they are based off of. Um, for next question, where does segment three end and four start? Does this webinar have anything to do with segment three? The webinar doesn't have anything to do with segment segment three. That project is funded and they had their own meetings. Um, this map shows it, uh, that she has pulled up right now, does show the beginning of the segment. It's east of County Road 478A. It, it's it's a, probably about a thousand feet east of there. It starts just west of County Road. Oh shoot, uh, now my memory's gonna lock up on me. Uh, I'll look it up for you guys if you, if you bear with me for just a second. But there is a, um, another county road that it starts just west of. It's the first county road just past 47, uh, 468. Sorry, I'm pulling it up on another screen. It's taking a second. I will. There we go. It, it starts really close to the uh, intersection with County Road 751. Um, this project builds the median opening that's at that location. All right, I have another question. When will right-of-way acquisition start on Section 5? Do you have 60% plans on Phase 5? So, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure, section, not mine. <laughs> uh, we submitted 60% uh, plans um, back in March and we are working towards our 90% our plans uh, at the moment which will be in um, which will be at uh, in January um, 
and the second part of that question was the uh, was the acquisition funding again that is dependent on the timing of the acquisition is dependent upon the uh, funding which is not known at this time all right thank you phil Okay, next question. Just west of 471 before the roundabout planned, do you have the speed limit for there? Yeah, just west of 471, the, the speed limit um, as it approaches the roundabouts is 55, and the speed limit, uh, the advisory speed limit does drop down to 25 as it goes through the roundabouts. Okay, and then regarding the previous question we had for segment five, do we know when the appraisal process for homes and land uh, within phase five will happen? Um, where exactly the appraisals occur in that process, um, I, I, I don't wanna give the wrong answer. I can get back to you on that, um, the appraisals um yes they they uh, may occur be prior to the actual acquisition i'm not certain of that but i can get back to you on that all right thank you phil i just want to remind everybody that you can type your comments or questions directly into the question pane on the meeting control panel anytime you can also submit your comments after the meeting by contacting the FDOT project manager, Eugene Francois, by standard mail, which is provided in the slides and on each of the project websites, accessed by going to cflroads.com and typing in the FPID numbers for each. You can contact Jude by email at jude.jean-francois at dot.state.fl.us or by telephone at 386 nine four three five four eight seven we really appreciate you for attending and all of the questions that are coming in we'll leave it open for for just a few more minutes and see if we have any questions coming in if i missed any questions please let me know okay will this will the state clean and maintain the retention ponds will the runoff contaminants be periodically removed from the ponds the state will maintain uh, the the retention ponds, um, uh, but as far as the contaminant contaminants, I don't I don't know if you know the answer to that, Jeff. Uh, do uh, they... Well, the, the stuff that settles out when they do the dredging of the ponds, um, it gets removed, but uh, that you know it settles out and shouldn't get into anything. Um, as far as the 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 debris and stuff on top, I mean, there's certain things that do get cleaned out but uh, a lot of it evaporates and goes away over time. I don't really have a better answer than that. Um, uh, I'm not sure if uh, something Bill could help out with, but uh, uh, he's online too. But uh, we, do, we do maintain it and clean them periodically. Yeah, I'm Bill Wyke. I'm with BCC Engineering on uh, Dash 4. Um, yeah, Jeff, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the contaminants will just settle out uh, down to the bottom of the pond, and they really uh, don't go anywhere after that. So uh, we don't really have any concerns with that. Thank you, Bill. Hmm? We have a question coming in about a specific property. Um, Mr. and Mrs. St. Pierre, we can reach out to you offline and provide a little more detail for your specific property. Does the project team have anything that they would like to, to add or would we like to have this discussion offline? Yeah, I, I think it's probably best to have that one offline because I'm not sure I'm, I'm following the question, so it may require a little dialogue to answer it. All right, next question. When when we calculate how much of our property will be involved 
from the maps, we should measure from the current center line of State Road 50 now, and will there be any help with mosquito control? Uh, they're, they're on those uh, the aerials that you can download online, it shows the existing and the proposed right-of-way line. So if you that that right away line should be co coincident with your your property line. So if you know where your property line is, you can measure the distance between the two of those. I know uh, the, a scale a bar scale was provided on those roll plots. I, I don't know how easy it is to measure using your Adobe program or whatever, but uh, but there you could approximate how how far it's going to go onto your property. And I also know that on on the the maps they do show a baseline. And each of those large numbers on the on the map um, will identify either 100 or 500 foot spacing. So that'll help you in your scaling of the drawings. And as far as the mosquito control, uh, I don't think that the DOT does that. I think that's more of a county operation um, and that's not really related to the roadway project. Okay, thank you. I just would like to mention that all comments, questions, and responses that we received this evening or through mail will be documented and added to the project websites. So we'll also be posting responses to all of these comments online as well, in case you are not able to, to see them or if you want documentation of them. Whichever way you choose to offer your comments, please have all comments submitted or postmarked by Friday, September 4th, 2020 to be included as a part of the project record for this virtual meeting. Florida's Department of Transportation does encourage the public to provide comments and questions regarding transportation projects throughout the lifetime of the project. Um, if you have your comments in by September 4th, they will just be a part of this specific meeting. Okay, next question, will retention ponds be fenced so they cannot be accessed by the public. Go ahead. Uh, typically, uh, no, they 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 are are not are not fenced. Um, like as mentioned previously, if there was an existing uh, say agricultural cultural fence on that property, and a pond is is being placed there now, uh, the, the the replacement of that fence will be part of the land acquisition process. Um, but the ponds will not be will not be fenced unless uh, you know unless we're replacing an existing fence or on the backside. Is there any, or I'm sorry, is there a plan to acquire all of? all or any property in Dash 5. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, right now we're not funded for acquisition. So, um, uh, you know, there, I guess there's there is a, an, a plan to, but uh, like I said, it's not fund, funded or scheduled. I just want to remind everyone that tonight's meeting will be is being recorded and will be posted on the project website, as well as answers to all of the comments and questions coming in, a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation being presented, as well as the design plans. So those will all be provided on both project websites for you to look in more detail. If it's all right for just a second, I want to share my screen to show everybody what the display looks like that they might be seeing when they get online. So it might help answer some of their questions and let them um, see a little better what uh, we're talking about here. So for example, I've, the this is on the Dash 4 project and it is a large PDF that you can see will pull up. So it's gonna be hard to see. The project is split into three segments because the PDF is so large but you can zoom in really easily. And for example, you could see here is the roundabout at 471 and State Road 50. And this blue line here represents a parcel 
or a right-of-way line that exists. And the yellow line is the proposed right-of-way line. So you can see there's a little bit of right-of-way being taken on the south side of the road and a bunch of right-of-way being taken on the north side of the road. And as you scroll down through the corridor, you can see there's a pond location shown here. This is a floodplain compensation area. It's green because it'll be grassed when it's completed, where this uh, pond here is gonna be a wet pond. You'll see water. And you can see we come down some of these side streets to tie in. If you zoom in, you can see there's median openings. Some driveways line up a little better than others, but we can't have a median opening for every driveway. And you get can see the existing parcel and the proposed right of way. And you can see how that looks throughout the corridor. So in this area, most of the right of way acquisition is on the north side. And in the curve down here, I know I'm jumping around, probably making some people seasick. It kind of splits on both sides of the road. So you look at the, um, there's a, a three displays for the Dash 4 project. And I think there's one display, is that correct, Phil, for the, uh, for the Dash 5 project. And they're correct. both very similar. And you can, you'll be able to see. Um, if you look in the upper corner of this, it has a north arrow and a bar scale. So that signifies 100 feet. And if you look on here, these are 500 feet apart and each one of these lines is 100 feet. So if you look here, you, see, you can see hmm, that's 10 to 20 feet of property being acquired on that side of the road. So that, that's how you can look at these. Um, and again, if you look at it and go, I think that's my house. I wanna know more information, go to the website, get the contact information and you can reach out to us and we can do it via email or phone call, whichever you're more comfortable with. And uh, um, We've even gone out in the field and met with property owners that uh, have had questions that we talked to about some of the pond sites. So, you know, again, we're here to try to help you answer the questions as best we can. Thank you, Jeff. And again, all, all these will be provided on the project website within the next couple of days, as well as a recording of this presentation and a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation. Is there a preliminary map for each phase? I think that we've discussed that. They'll be provided on the project website. You'll be able to see the detail that we're showing right now. Mm -hmm. And then if you have any ad additional questions regarding properties or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to the FDOT project manager, Jean Francois, by his email at jugene francois at dot.state.fl.us. All of his contact information is also provided on both project websites as well as within this PowerPoint. We have another question. Um, I think we can, Mr. Finley, we can address this with you offline. We can get into the details a little bit more and, and pull up your property and, and show you what we're proposing, if that's okay with you. Project team, do you have anything extra that you want to add to that, or? Uh, no, we yeah, definitely could indicate to... where he, you know, where he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have your contact information from the registration, so we can reach out to you after this meeting and provide you with a better answer to your question. <clears throat> Thank you. Do we currently have a right-of-way map with preliminary parcel numbers? That is being developed now. I know our mappers are in the process of developing those maps and uh, I'm not sure at what stage they are. Um, I do know that uh, they're starting to add the line work to it, but I don't know if the parcel numbers are there yet. Uh, we're we're in a similar stage. Uh, we're not not quite there yet, um, but uh, uh, we should be there soon. So again, whichever way you do choose to offer your comments, whether it be by mailing in the comment form that is provided on the project website for download, 
within the handout section of this GoToWebinar or by email to the project manager, Eugene Francois, or by phone, or even in this GoToWebinar and the questions pane of this function. Um, please have all of your comments and, and questions submitted by Friday, September 4th of 2020 to be included as a part of the public record for this virtual meeting. Now, of course, FDOT or Florida Department of Transportation encourages the public to provide comments and to ask questions regarding transportation projects throughout the lifetime of the project. We want to make sure everybody's still involved. This isn't your last and only time to make comments or ask questions. Please reach out if you have any concerns or if you want to talk offline about specific properties. The project team is available to reach out to you as well. We do not have any questions coming in at this time. You can give it another minute. Again, please visit both project websites. Contact information is provided. There will also be a recorded version of this presentation online, as well as a PDF of the presentation, answers to any comments and questions received. You have until September 4th of 2020 to be included as a part of the project record for this virtual meeting. We encourage you to please download the presentation or the recorded version of this. If you were unable to log into GoToWebinar, if you had to call in from your phone, this will be available for download on both project websites. Again, you can access both project websites by going to cflroads.com. For the Dash 4 project, you can type in 435859-4, or for the Dash 5 project, 435859-5, into the search bar to locate each of the project's websites where all this information will be available. Okay, in section five, what is the distance between the road and bike path? Uh, that that uh, varies in, in the in the rural section. Um, there is a ditch between. Uh, this is from the county line to Lee Road. There is a ditch between the uh, bike path and, and the roadway. Uh, but when we get in from Lee Road uh, to County Road 33. In the urban section, um, there's only a small utility strip um, between uh, the only a couple feet between the curb, back of curb, and the 12 foot path. Uh, but that does also have a <coughs> buffered bike lane um, on the roadway portion as well. Um, and you know, the offset in the rural section, that ditch is maybe, uh, I don't know, 20, 20 feet to offset or so. so. All right, thank you, Phil. We have another question coming in. Is there landscaping in the center? Uh, there is gonna be landscaping in the center of the roundabouts. That's the only place right now that we have proposed landscaping. And that's the same for the Dash 5. Okay, we don't have any questions coming at this time. Give it another minute again. You can submit your questions in the question pane of this GoToWebinar. 
well as co contacting the Florida Department of Transportation project manager, June Jean, June Jean Francois. <laughs> Give it another minute just to see if we have any questions come in. I will mention again that the PDF of this presentation as well as a comment form are available for download under the handout section of this GoTo webinar, as well as on the project website. Please feel free to reach out to Jude if you have any additional questions. He can pass the questions and comments along to the project team. His email is J U D E dot J E A N dash F R A N B O I S at D O T dot state dot F L dot U S or by telephone at three eight six nine four three five four eight seven. We appreciate everyone attending this evening. It doesn't look like we have any more comments coming in, so at this time I'm I'm going to pass it over to you, Jude. Would you like to close the meeting out? Sure. Again, we want to thank everyone for attending this um, virtual public meeting for segment four and five of State Road 50 design. If there is no additional questions or comments at this time, we are going to close out the meeting. Um, please feel free to contact me, myself, Jude J. Francois. I'm the project manager for the Dash 4 and the Dash 5 regarding. Uh, those types of my contact information is provided on both the project website throughout tonight's presentation. Again, thank you for calling and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.